My name is James Cullen Bresak and I am the director of the spec pilot A Rock and a Hard Place. Last time we spoke to you, James, you were on a busy stretch and you said you may take some time off, but it seems like things are not slowing down for you. In fact, it's the opposite. I really want to take some time off. Uh, I just have this horrible habit of like, you know, I make like, I make these projects, you know, with like what has become my family. Like, you know, it's, you know, the crew, the DP, John DeFazio, I work with him on everything. This will be our sixth project together. Shannon Doherty, um, who's acting in this, this will be our seventh project together. Um, and so it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like, Hey, do you want to get back together with a bunch of your friends and create something fun? And it's like, it's the one thing I really love and feel at home doing. So I think, uh, as much as I decide that I want to take some time off, I feel like I've been saying that for like four years, like, Oh, after this one, I'm going to take some time off. And it's either a, that I actually do want to take some time off or B, I'm just mentally preparing myself that I might not have another gig right after. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, I think it's like a, a combination of the two, really, because I kind of do want to take some time off, but I don't really actually see myself slowing down anytime soon. Like, for instance, today I said, this is my last project for a while. I'm, I'm going to take some time off. Then I got sent the music video offer literally during the day today and I accepted it. So I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing a music video after this. So I, 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 I don't think I actually am taking any time off. I think I'm just... <laughs> when you do have downtime, do you get nervous or restless? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I talked about that in the other interview, but I was like, you know, you have to... Like, for me, I always go, oh, yeah, I want to I take time off and do this stuff. And then, you know, like, I'll go, like, two days without working on something, and I'll be like, what are you doing with your life? You're not doing anything. You need to, like, do something, write something, create something. Because if I'm not like working on something, I start to realize like, wow, I'm just kind of sitting at home watching Netflix. And that's like, I should probably start doing something. Because when your whole life is working in this industry, um, you don't have a day job. Or like, maybe you do have a day job. But for me, I don't have a day job. So when I'm like not working on a project, I'm just sitting at home spending money and I'm like wow my bank account is starting to deplete because I'm spending the money I made and I'm not doing anything else but spending money and watching Netflix. I know you're active on social media you have over a hundred thousand plus followers what's the feedback that you get a lot from people on Twitter and Instagram Facebook? I mean I, I, I seem to get really good feedback um, you know uh, I have a lot of uh, a lot of Twitter fans and followers that like like what I do and, and also like Facebook as well. Um, I, I kind of find it interesting because I wanted to keep my Facebook really more personal, but I realize I, I don't know more than 90% of the people on my Facebook now. Um, <laughs> and Twitter, I, I don't really know most of them either. I mean, except like, you know, I do interact with my fans and I respond to them and I've seen I that, read yeah. every tweet mm -hmm. and favorite them and I send them like, you know, an automatic DM that says like, hey, check out my movies and then they'll respond and I'll respond back. And a lot of people ask me questions about making films. And so like, I like to answer and, and be available for that. Um, and you know, I, I love I love having my Twitter and my social media. And I actually, I've believe it or not, been able to cast projects through social media. Like, you know, one of my good friends, Jonathan Lipnicki, I was a fan of his work. I met him through Twitter. Wow. And like I now we're really close friends and we've worked together on two projects. It's so, so it's cool. it's you know, it's 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 fun and interesting in that in that respect. Um, but, you know, I also find it interesting as well on another flip side, because my auto DM goes out and goes, hey, you know, check out my movies on Amazon or whatever. And like I'll get responses from all these people around the world saying like, hey, I love your movies. I saw like, you know, this one or that one. And like all of them are always responding saying, oh, I love them or I've seen them. And my, my response is like either A, like a distributor owes me a lot of money that I don't know about or B, um, <laughs> or sorry, that's so distracting. Uh, either A, a distributor owes me a lot of money I don't know about or B, which is I think the more likely one is, you know, things are probably getting downloaded on the internet a lot. Cause I mean, a perfect, a perfect, instance of piracy is like, you know, a movie I did, um, uh, I won't say which one, but the first like month it was out, it only like shipped like 5,000 units. 
And then I looked at like one of those like piracy websites and it had something like 150,000 downloads. Wow. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like if I only had like a dollar for every single time that that happened, it, it'd be, you know, but at least they're watching them, right? Not advocating piracy, but do you think that it can ever help someone's career or that it can help a project in some way? I think sometimes, like you look at that movie, um, Inc., if you saw that, that movie was, they actually just released it for free online. They encouraged the piracy of it. So I think yes and no. I mean, personally, I'm, I'm against piracy because I think it's stealing, legitimately stealing um, from the filmmaker. And, you know, I know it's kind of weird to say, but it's like, yeah, it's messed up to, to pirate stuff. But if you're going to pirate stuff, at least don't pirate the indie films. You know, like the really low budget indie stuff, like, you know, the difference between, you know, one extra DVD and, and one extra download is like somebody's rent that month, possibly. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, don't I, I, I so I it's like I, I feel for people because I have like a lot of friends that like are at this and haven't really been doing like well with it because of because of piracy. So. I, I mean, I want people to understand that it really does hurt the filmmaker. It really does, mm -hmm. you know? How do you think a lot of people in your generation um, and, and slightly older feel because they've gotten so much for free on the internet? How, how do they view it? I mean, the weird thing about it is like, you know, I will be talking to like friends, like friends from high school or like friends from, you know, from childhood, from like, you know, elementary school or whatever. People I've known for years and years. And I'll be like, hey, you should check out my new movie, blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, they'll be like, oh yeah, sure. I'll just like download it. Or like, oh yeah, I'll watch it on like, you know, this website or whatever. And I'll be like, you're literally just telling me you're gonna steal from me. Like, would you really come up to me and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take $20 out of your wallet. Like, <laughs> no, but for some reason it's so like, okay amongst that. Like they, they, they actually think that it's, it's become so part of the culture that like it's fine when it's really not. Um, so I think if there's like a way to find, to like monetize that, like, you know, I think if we release like movies for free online with ads on them or something, that's at least better than, than, than having them stolen. But like, you know, you look at like those websites that have the movies hosted for free and all the all this traffic is driven to websites they're making money on those sites because like they are selling ad space on those sites those people are making a lot of money off of our hard work sure you know what do you think of youtube um having uh various ways to watch either films or videos without the ad but then you pay for a subscription do you think that your generation is okay with that because they're so used to? I definitely think they are. I mean, look at like Netflix. Like I actually like prefer, I don't watch TV shows on television anymore. I wait for the season to be on Netflix because with my schedule, like I'm not able to like go like, well, once a week I have an hour at this time to watch this show. I go like, all right, I have three days off. I'm going to watch an entire season of, you know, Law and Order. Or like I have three days off, I'm going to watch every episode of Jessica Jones, which I did. I watched, I watched every episode of Breaking Bad in like four days, like every season. Because I was just like, I have time to do it. And the funny thing about that is I got like an email from Netflix asking if I was okay. Like because, really? like, because it played like nonstop, like, and I guess like, <laughs> like I didn't sleep for like 48 hours. Like they legitimately thought like maybe I had died and just left net Netflix on. But there was like, it goes like one of those, like, are you still watching? And I'm like, <laughs> like, yes, stop making me feel bad about this. Like, it's a good show. Leave me alone. What do you think is the biggest threat to indie filmmaking currently? I mean, I definitely say piracy. Um, and then the other threat to indie filmmaking is, I mean, geez, I'd, I'd pretty much just say like piracy, really like that. And like, and then, you know, just like fan support, really, um, just because like, you know, I, I feel like what I notice is a lot of people say they're very supportive of indie films. And, you know, it's, it's like one thing I, I noticed, like a, a lot of people, and maybe this is just an LA thing, but people are like, oh, I love indie films and I love, you know, um, I love uh, like foreign films and I love documentaries. But like, if you actually like look at the statistics of like the sales of indie films, documentaries and foreign films, or like the statistics of how many people actually watch them on Netflix or whatever, they don't actually watch them. They just like to say that they watch them. 
So it's it's one of those things. Like statistically speaking, they get the least amount of plays out of anything else. So it's I think I think the I think it's it, people like to sound like they like something versus actually support it. Like I'm the person who goes out to see indie films in theaters. You know, and 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 that's like that's that's important. Like if if especially like for me, like I make genre films. Not not just indie films, but I I'm known for making genre films, like horror movies. I support any horror movie that comes out in theaters. I will go see it in theaters, whether I think it's good, whether I think it's bad, whether I think it's gonna be good, whether I think it's gonna be bad. I go see it in theaters because there will be a time with the way the industry is going, if they don't get supported in theaters, they will stop coming out in theaters. It will only be those ma major tentpole movies. Right, right. So like, the way I look at it is like, we have a responsibility to support the things that we actually do care about within the theater or else we will have a time where we don't see these things in theaters anymore. Why do you think people say that they love foreign films, documentaries, whatever? Is it because they want to sound like a cinephile or, or it's, it's romantic? It's, what, what is the reason? I mean, yeah, I, I think so. It's, I think it's the same thing like, you know, like when people say they like classical music. That, that just died. Do we need it or no? What's the definition of a cinephile? I guess it, uh, the definition of a cinephile is like a person who, who really, truly loves movies and supports them. I mean, like, you know, I was a film collector. Like, you know, I was, I was the kid who, like, you know, growing up, I watched every movie that came out. I would, you know, I would look for the obscure films. I would go to the local video store and, like, rent anything. And I'd talk with the video clerk and be like, hey, which, w what movie can I get? And, like, they'd recommend stuff and I'd look for stuff. And, like, that's how I found out about Old Boy and Ichi the Killer and all that stuff from, like, you know, the local people at the video stores. And, like, I would go... One of my favorite pastimes is I would go to like, you know, like Blockbuster or 2020 video and like rummage through for like hours through like the five for 20 bins and like buy as many movies as I possibly could. I have a DVD collection of 6,000 movies. Um, and like, you know, I had made some good money like doing like, uh, like promotions for, um, for, for, you know, uh, events and stuff before I got into movies when I was like younger, I did that. And I also like worked in a restaurant and I took all the money that I had saved up, which was like a couple grand. And instead of going to film school, you know, I had, I was going to make my pure joy and stuff, but I spent all that money and bought as many obscure movies on Amazon as I possibly could and was just watching like tons and tons of obscure movies like stuff that was like a hundred dollars for a DVD because it was completely out of print I would hunt for like the really expensive stuff that like nobody else had because I was like I need to see this and I think um, sadly like that that because of the the death of the video stores I feel like that's that's like dying away like you know people wanting to hunt down these obscure things and like the collectors and stuff I mean like and I'm guilty of it too because like I I own 6,000 DVDs and I haven't bought a DVD in two years because I now go well I have it all on Netflix and like I, I justify it in my head even though I know hey I should buy a DVD right now like I go see them in theaters I'll like rent the movie on like you know Amazon Prime or whatever but like for some reason I just like I've now somehow in my head convinced myself oh well you know it'll be on Netflix that's that's a Netflix movie that's one that I'll wait for Netflix I don't need that you know um, and I find it I find it interesting that like you know that's you know we've, we've become so complacent within our society that we're able to just write off wanting to own something and wanting to collect it and so you know I think like true cinephiles are dying away because like I even though I love film and I'm I'm a student of film to the day I die I definitely have started to feel like I'm no longer a true cinephile because I don't go out and search for those things anymore. The things that brought me into loving this, it's like, you know, we don't have that, that, that video store, that sanctuary to go in and get those things anymore. And I think it's, uh, I think it's sad. I think it's a sad, a sad thing. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I definitely feel like you know I, I'm 23 years old and when I have when I have kids I, I definitely feel like it's gonna be sad that they'll never be able to go to like a video store to look through a bunch of DVDs and stuff